Welcome, everybody. Welcome again to a new edition of Tulsa Little Jam. This gorgeous ginger man here is Weston Horn of Weston Horn, and the dudes around him are the Hush. They don't talk much, obviously, so. But they're not here to talk. They're here to play some rockin' music, and we're very excited to have them. We're very excited to have you guys. So with that, I introduce you to Weston Horn and the Hush. They say one is the loneliest number. They say it takes two to tango. They say bad things come in three. We're gonna give you four. So I got what you're looking for, I got what you need so I got a little magic, I got it's up my sleeve so I got a vision of what this world could be You keep my head This episode of Oil Fire's Tulsa Little Jam is brought to you in part by... So I am very excited about sitting here finally with you because it's been actually kind of hard for me to finally get you on the show. There's a lot of us in the band. There's so. a lot of you in the band, but also because you guys are really in demand, you're actually... Oh, well, thanks. Oh, you know, you, you're... you're <laughs> we, we play for each one of our band members' mothers every other day, so it's... Yeah. So, uh, but tell me, uh, w the one thing that I'm really most impressed about is 
you guys have this like incredible style. Thank it was you. the first thing that stuck out when I first started coming back and I, I was introduced to Weston Horn and the Hush by one of, I think Mike Eddy. Mike, mm -hmm. you were the one that introduced us, right? Yep. So Mike Eddy uh, is a guy that I met at a restaurant, mm -hmm. outdoor patio restaurant. And he was like, you gotta check out Weston Horn and the Hush. And I did, and I was just mesmerized. And I was like, I haven't seen this kind of like style, and they have this great look, and it's consistent. Uh, very rarely, except in the summertime, do they actually <laughs> disrobe a little bit just because they're <laughs> overheating and stuff. Yeah. But So what led to you guys actually deciding to do that? So as far as the look goes, I, I've always, I grew up listening to Dean Martin and Frank Sinatra and, uh, and all these greats who always looked like they were dressing to the nine. And I, and I always thought, I don't remember who said it, but there was a quote that basically was that if, if your audience is paying and spending their time and their attention to come see you, you should respect that and you should dress up for them. So that's always what I, I you know, in this day and age, there's so much stuff that people can do. It's so cool that they come out and support us, and so we want to respect them right back and say thank you for choosing us. I'm chuckling because he says this, you look at him, and then you look at the way I'm dressed. <laughs> <laughs> now, but in, in my defense, I do, I do, I will switch wardrobe, you know, for other episodes and everything. <laughs> but I wanted to wear this because it says it was me, I let the dogs out. <laughs> sort of an honor, I wanted to feel like as, as, as awesome and cool as Weston. <laughs> So Baja, man. <laughs> exactly. Good call. Good call. All right, so tell me about the first song. So the first song is uh, is off our going to be on our new album called. It's a song called "Don't Give Up," and um, and I'm actually kind of doing uh, a TEDx talk coming up pretty soon about that song because it's a sort of the philosophy of that when you realize that being a musician is what you want to do, you should immediately turn around and do something else. Yeah, but exactly. if you can't shake that, then you have to understand that it's going to be the most backbiting uphill battle that you've ever gone through. And so, uh, but when you realize that it's what you were meant to do, you can't really quit on it because it's who you are as a person. And so when you figure that out, it's a, that sort of ideology of you can't give up on it because it's who you are. So yeah, so that's what that song's about. Well, it's kind of like pursuing whatever it is you yeah, love. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Anything you love, you have to throw all in or you're not gonna get yeah. out of it what you truly desire. Yeah, and because you know when we started playing music, you know, it's it's been we've been together a little over two years, but for me, I've been playing music for for 15, and I noticed that it wasn't so many as like people outside saying you should give up, you should try something different. Although there was a lot of those people as well, yeah. but but it was also like the internal struggle that you go through, and it's it's um, all the times that you kind of tell yourself that you're you know you're kind of negative on yourself or whatever. When I started playing music. Um, it didn't come naturally to me. And even to this day, it does not come naturally to me. Not being humble, you can ask my band, they will tell you. <laughs> but it was one of those things to where I saw a lot of people that were 100 times better than me that had given up on it. And I just realized that I had gotten past them because of the, the tenacity of sticking to it. So that's, that's don't give up. That's the po point behind it. So I think he does a pretty amazing job of not making look look like it actually doesn't come naturally, <laughs> right? It seems completely natural to me, the show. That's what the suits and the hat is for. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's to draw, smoke and mirrors. Yeah, smoke and draw, mirrors, draw everybody. Away. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the next song you're going to play for us? Uh, the next song we're going to play is off our first album, and it's a song called Greyhound. This episode of Oil Fire's Tulsa Little Jam is brought to you in part by... Thank you so much. Got a 
This episode of Oil Fire's Tulsa Little Jam is brought to you in part by... So talk to me about Greyhound, because that was an amazing song. I, I want to like hear it. more about that. Um, so Greyhound, I, we, it was one of those songs to where it almost didn't make the album, and I had written it, and I had shown it to the band, and everybody was like, eh, it's okay. And then we all played it together. <laughs> kind of like what they thought about your musical <laughs> Ex- talent. Exactly right. like they thought of it. Uh, so we, uh, we actually played it together as a band, and the first time we did, we all just were like, all right, that's a single. That's not a song we should throw away. That should be the, one of the ones we do it. You know, it's just kind of the, the concept of, of, you know, it's sort of about a girl that is in another town and you, you get on a Greyhound bus and you go and you hope she's there when you get off the bus that she might not be, you know, so taking a chance. <laughs> is that how you met your girl? No. no. <laughs> a lot of my songs, I imagine what it would be like to 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 have a girl, you know, and then so I just I visualize what that would be, and then I I write a song about normal people that have situations. <laughs> <laughs> I was homeschooled, you know, till I, you know, I my whole life. So, you know, that explains a lot. It really does. Really if you've been to I our show, like, like I was able to contain it with four songs, but whew, <laughs> if you come to a longer show, you'll see. It's homeschooled. Because you got, like, I've been to one of your shows where you have, like, full-on dancers come out yep. and everything, right? Yeah, again, it's, it's sort of the idea that um, there's, like, a bajillion people that are playing music now. It's so much easier. Technology, the internet, everything makes it to where now there's... It went from being a lot of musicians to everyone's a musician. And so it's, like people aren't okay with just coming out to see a concert anymore. You gotta entertain them, you gotta put on a show. And so 
Uh, that's that's our philosophy. It's like we're gonna. That's kind of like the way it was like in the old days. Like you were saying yeah. about yeah. respect, like the yeah. old the old timers and stuff when music was like cool and stuff like that with yeah. Dean and or Dean Martin and Sinatra yeah. and stuff. It's it was a show back Absolutely. then. Absolutely, you know, yeah. they added an element to it, and that's what you're doing. Yeah, we're bringing a little of that back. So you're actually making it even truer than. It's been in a long time. Yeah, we're one up in Dean Martin and Frank Sinatra pretty well. Hey, well, yeah, take it easy. <laughs> <laughs> we're fixing what they screwed up. You know, yeah, so. <laughs> of course. It ruined music for me, those guys. Yeah. And you have saved it. <laughs> yeah, that's the idea. <laughs> so what's the next song we're going to hear? So the next song that we're going to play is a song called Dying for a Living, which is also all going to be on the new album. Nice. So. Looking forward to that one. Yeah. This episode of Oil Fire's Tulsa Little Jam is brought to you in part by... This episode of Oil Fire's Tulsa Little Jam is brought to you in part by. So tell me, tell me about dying for a living, because I was just. So it's. I have no words. Oh my goodness, that's so sweet. 
Um, is that a bad thing or a good thing? I'll get back to you on that one. Okay, well, that's fair enough. Uh, Dying for a Living, we wrote, and it, I wanted to kind of do a throwback song to the stuff that I grew up listening to, which again was kind of Sinatra and, and Dean Martin, but it was also Huey Lewis and the News, and it was the Rascals, and just like good old fashioned like rock and roll that made you feel good, made you want to tap your toes and dance. And, um, and so that was the idea behind it, was writing a song with that feel behind it. And then the, the song is actually sort of written about being uh, in a relationship with someone and it's just awful from the inside but from the outside it's uh it looks all peachy keen yeah can i say peachy keen on the camera it's pretty dirty word but well, i'll take it this is rock and roll baby yeah <laughs> some of my peachy virgin keen. ears <laughs> peachy keen is that a bad word <laughs> Well, I just think I'm going to lose some fans saying words like that. Mike, Mike, Mike's <laughs> blushing, actually, right now. As soon as he said peachy. Woo! <laughs> Weston! <laughs> Is that it? That's all about the song? That's all. That's all I'm going to say <laughs> okay. about that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, we've got time for one more song. What's the last yep. song you're going to play for? The last song we're going to play is the is the single off our first album, which is a song called She Had It All. Nice. Yep. All right. I'm excited about that because I've actually heard a lot about that song. Oh, thank you. This episode of Oil Fire's Tulsa Little Jam is brought to you in part by...
This episode of Oil Fire's Tulsa Little Jam is brought to you in part by... Tell me, okay, she had it all, by the way. It was That was incredibly entertaining. Oh, thank you. I feel like you, you do, I noticed some like kung fu moves there a couple of times when you're jumping yeah. in the air. So a lot of people don't know I, I did taekwondo for about two that's years. That's not true. It's absolutely true. That is true. no way that's not true. It's absolutely true because I wanted to get my stage kicks better. Is that really true? <laughs> wasn't the whole reason. I also <laughs> really don't have any muscles. You like the belts. Yeah, I, it wasn't so much the belts. It was just I don't want to get killed by someone so I was like I have long legs that made sense <laughs> it's okay <laughs> well I that's saw it what she had it all is about no yeah, it's not I almost made a comment to <laughs> Amira because I saw you do this double kick thing in the air yeah. I was like oh my god I didn't know Weston could kick like that switch that's kick nice. baby yeah it's a switch kick yeah I'll teach you after the show would you <laughs> yeah do you guys want a demonstration right now no that's no. not <laughs> there's, nope. too much, there's too much stuff on this stage <laughs> we'll probably knock something over <laughs> well what's next for Weston Horn in the Hush we have a lot, actually. We've been very, very, very blessed by a lot of these great people coming out and supporting us and, and getting us into more venues. Um, we've got some big stuff on the horizon that this this is totally rude to do, but we can't announce yet. So we've got some big announcements coming up as far as some big shows, some out-of-state shows that we've had some uh, festivals, which the crazy thing is we haven't really pursued a lot of out-of-state stuff. We've played some stuff, one-offs here or there, but for the most part, um, the cool thing is we were having people reach out to us. I don't know. It's all these awesome people that have been sharing our music and, and it's getting out. And so people have started to approach us for some festivals. And then, uh, like I said, we got the TED Talk, TEDx Talk coming up that we're going to do a, an actual song on a TEDx Talk as well. Um, and then the biggest thing, the most exciting news that I have is that uh, in March, we've rented out Dockside Studios again down in Louisiana to track volume two, um, which I don't know if we're calling it volume two yet. We're going back and forth on some names, but um, but so that's that's where the magic happens. And I'm so excited about the second album because the first album I wrote my entire life, that was like songs that I'd written from forever. And then we were like, we're gonna have a horn section. So we added horns to it. This time it was like, we were all together as a band. I knew all the paints that I could choose to choose from to like to actually paint new songs. And, and the cool thing is we've got just I, I don't want to sound arrogant because that's the least thing that I am. But it's five times better than the first album. It will be. He's the rudest, most arrogant person <laughs> I have ever sat with. Yeah, it's absolutely true. But I love how he says that. He makes it sound like these things happen on accident. But I'm sure there's plenty of people in the audience who know how hard these guys work. I say these guys because it's obviously not just Weston. No. But to to amass the, the amount of talent that you guys have in a band like that. Every single one of them had a personality that fed into the overall product, which is yeah. what it is. And a lot of people treat it like, oh, it's just, just, just this dream I have as if this thing's gonna magically come to me. I wish. And yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But it doesn't happen like that. It's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. Yeah. And you're working constantly while having full-time jobs on top yeah, of that absolutely you know like matt your drummer is is uh, owns like a drum, a, world, a drum yeah. world which yeah. is a, a really big drum store that's been around for i think it's celebrating their 30th anniversary yeah. so these guys work really really hard all the musicians i mean this happens everywhere the, the people that really care and really get out there and stuff yeah. they work so hard and i've seen it in you oh well, thank you and i that's why i was like we have to have not just the music but it's the 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 the, uh, the the work ethic behind you guys is what's inspiring and what should be shared for the next generation, so that they see before they get into it. If you don't, this isn't what you necessarily wind up doing for the rest of your life. You're gonna learn how passion can help you in yeah. general in what you do. It Absolutely. might not be for music. Thankfully for all of us, for you it is music, and Thank it's you. an amazing thing. And I'm very I'm very happy to see the <laughs> success he's having. But I would say it's really important to to us and to the band. We when we started this whole band, it was that we wanted to do something different. And the main point was that we wanted to take people out of their situations, out of their stressors, out of their family issues, their money issues, and give them one hour, two hours, however long the show is, of maybe believing that there's a little bit of good and magic left in this world. And to, to just have a, have a little bit of time to where you can forget about all that stuff. And, and we have such a heart for this to, to give back to people with our music that we've been really, really sincerely blessed that people have seen that. 
that have seen the heart behind the band. And I think that's why so many people have bought in. And then we have people that have bought in even more so that have helped out. We've got uh, Jen is our PR rep who does bajillions of things for us and m way more than her title. And we've got, uh, you know, we've got drum techs and guitar techs and, and just a thousand people that want to get behind us and help us. And it's just, it's really, really humbling to, to put your heart out there and then to have somebody say that they respect that and that they're they're behind it is it's very very humbling and, and it's an amazing feeling so. <laughs> so you're you're i love weston horn and the hush they're okay they're okay they're okay <laughs> so we really appreciate you guys being here and we're really really psyched to have finally gotten weston horn and the hush Thanks, on bro. the show so thank Pleasure. you very much <laughs> weston horn everybody i said one is the loneliest number they say it takes two to tango they say bad things come in three We're gonna give you four